five senses. Five senses make us connect with the world around us. But what are these five senses? Let's get to know what they are. Sight This is what our two eyes do. They see. If you close your eyes or if your eyes cannot see, then you lose your sight for that time. For sight to work, we need light around us. If the lights in the bedroom are turned off at night, our sight doesn't work. So when your parents called you for dinner, we used our sight to see the food, whether it was colourful or not. Hearing Remember when your mom or dad called you for dinner? You used one of your senses called hearing. We hear through our two ears. With them, we can even make out which direction the noise is coming from. Smell And when you went close to the dining table, what did you do? You smelt the food, right? Then you were using your sense of smell. We smell with our nose. Smell helps us know what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat. This is important because if we eat bad food, we can fall sick. So use your noses, people. Touch. Yum! The food smells so good. We have to have a bite. But how do you get it into your tummy? We have to pick it up first, right? And when we do that, we use another sense, the sense of touch. This sense is there not just on our fingers, it is there on our skin, which covers the whole body. Oh yes indeed! Taste. You have seen the food and smelt the food. Your mouth is already watering. So you pick up the food to eat it. You then put it in your mouth to experience the next sense. The sense of taste. We have the sense in our mouth. Yummy! I love to eat good food, don't you? To better understand retinal vitreo disorders, we must first examine how vision works. In order for one to see, a light source is required. Without light, everything is black. The light emits particles called photons, which bounce off solid objects in all directions before eventually reaching the eye. In order to see well, the tissue that they go through must be transparent. First, the cornea, located at the front of the eye. Then, the crystalline lens behind the pupil. Then, the vitreous body in the middle of the eye. Finally, they reach the retina, the eye's photographic plate, stopping at the retinal pigment epithelium, where they set off nerve pulses. These pulses are directed towards the optic nerve, and then the optic pathways, 
before arriving at the occipital brain where the image is formed. This process is what enables us to take in the world around us. The detection of specific airborne molecules, referred to as autogens, results in the sense of smell. As the autogen is inhaled, it moves through the nostril and into the nasal cavity. There it comes in contact with the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory bulb, which lies above the nasal cavity, receives sensory information from the olfactory epithelium. Within the upper nasal cavity, the autogens dissolve in the mucous lining, where they can interact with receptors on cells in a specialized region on the olfactory epithelium. The detection of specific water-soluble molecules found in food or drink results in the sensation of taste. Specialized cells found in taste buds on the tongue contain receptors capable of interacting with molecules found in our food. When a taste receptor is stimulated, an electrical signal is produced by the sensory cell, resulting in an impulse which is transmitted to the brain and results in the perception of taste. The body's largest organ, the skin, serves as a protective coat, guarding internal structures from the outside environment. It is composed of two distinct layers of tissue, the epidermis and the dermis. The epidermis consists of an outer sheet of dead cells called the stratum corneum, and a deeper section of rapidly dividing cells called the basal layer. When dead cells of the stratum corneum are damaged or scraped off during body activity, cells from the basal layer rise to replace them. The epidermis serves as the body's initial barrier to invading foreign substances. Directly below the basal layer is the thicker dermis layer, made of dense connective tissue. Embedded within the dermis are several kinds of important sensory receptors, including thermoreceptors, which detect temperature change, Meissner's corpuscles, which are sensitive to touch, and free nerve endings, which detect pain and tissue damage. The dermis also contains many other structures, including sweat glands, hair follicles, and blood vessels. To understand the function of a cochlear implant, we will follow the path traveled by any sound under normal conditions. The sound wave travels through the ear channel. And reaches the cochlea via the middle ear. cochlea the sound wave is transformed into electrical pulses which travel down the nerves to the brain then the sound is processed the sound is transmitted at a high speed are a few of my favorite things girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes silver white winters that melt into springs these are a few of my favorite things when the dog bites Baby, what you 
A pig and wild